Namaste everyone and welcome to the Wednesday night, um, I think it's Wednesday night, Wednesday night um, Anchor the Light Meditation. So before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, Holy Masters, Saints, Archangels, Holy Angels and Spiritual Helpers. Personally to my teacher, Master Chalkok Sri Mahagur Jumeli, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing and divine protection. We thank you in full faith and so it is. Right, so anyway, I had to change venue a little bit. Uh, some of you might recognize this is where we had our meditation, the full moon meditation with uh, Sage Robbins. Loving energy. So anyway, um, for tonight, let's just talk a little bit about stillness. You know, I noticed like in the news, you have so many things going on in so many places, you know, with COVID, with the weather, with fire still going on in some places. There's just so many things happening. And we have a tendency to forget all of them, all this activity is happening outside of the soul. In other words, within you is perpetual stillness, calmness, or what you call serenity. And a lot of times when we get so caught up with what's happening outside, we forget that we have access to that stillness anytime we want to. And I remember my teacher used to say, stillness, my teacher said, stillness is not the objective. For a lot of people, calmness alone is already a big deal. But calmness is still nothing compared to stillness. And stillness, for most people, think it's the end all be all, but in reality, it's just a stepping stone. But for the probably 95% of the population, just to be still is already a huge deal. Just like, oh, finally. You know, like in the Meditation Twin Hearts, the actual recording with my teacher's voice, the silence is three and a half minutes. For a lot of people to go, wow, man, that is so still and quiet. It is. It's wonderful. But you have to realize of all the meditations in Pranic Healing or Hatik Yoga, Meditation Twin Hearts is the least potent. When you get to meditation, the blue pearl, kundalini meditation, high levels of arhatic yoga meditation, you go, no, that is stillness. Even then, the teacher says, there's more. So let's kind of break this down on how to achieve this stillness. You see, a lot of people don't realize that spirituality is not one of those things that, oh, it happened. It just happened. Just because you do not know the process that led to it, does not mean there's no process. And why is the process important? Because without understanding a process, without identifying the process, you cannot replicate the effect or the results. Haven't you noticed sometimes you go, yeah, I did this and wow, man, that worked out great. I had such a deep meditation or it's just like, a, just like you're cooking. Let's, let's you know, make it really practical. You know when you're cooking, Sometimes you say, yeah, I just guided what I cook. I put this pinch of salt, this much soy sauce. I put this much vinegar, blah, 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 so, so. And then it came out great. Somebody asked you, how'd you do that? You go, mm -hmm, I just knew. So number one, unless you have really good muscle memory, or you just know what to do at that time, the chances of you coming up with the same food each time is almost zero. Next, you can teach it to someone because they, there's no process. It's just like there are a lot of good healers out there. And this is one thing my teacher told me. He said, there are a lot of natural born healers. But those miracles left and right. You ask them, could you teach me? They go, I was just guided. Which is true. And it's great. There's no one slight problem. Even if this healer, this super fantastic healer, works 24 hours a day, every single day for the next 10 years, he or she could not possibly alleviate the pain and suffering of everybody in a city. It's impossible, let alone a country or the world. That's why Master Cho came up with pranic healing. He looked at all the different healing modalities, look at what mechanism is behind this healing, what is the principle why healing works, and then after that, he synthesized it by doing exper doing experiment and synthesized it into techniques. Once the techniques are known, guess what? 
He can take anybody, somebody like me who can't feel anything, could care less about anybody else but himself, <laughs> taught me the technique, healed my wife of, of broken hip, healed our daughter of uh, autism, healed my mom of uh, indigestion, and actually taught a lot of you how to do this. Guess what? Spirituality is the same. Yes, I know some of you say, yeah, you know, I just do it when I'm guided. That's great. I wish I had your intuition. See, I'm an engineer by trade. I work with process. This led to this, this led to this, therefore this. And guess what? Stillness is the same thing. Stillness happens when the right ingredients are there. Just like when you're cooking, if you have the right proportion and ratio of everything else, you come up with that dish. You have a thousand people repeat the identical recipe, then you come up with the same dish. Make sense? So, I hope you understand why we're going through this. Because some of you go, yeah, I just go into it. Yeah, lucky you. The rest of us, we can't do it. But if there's a system, everybody can do it. So, to put it very simply, step one is to understand that the lower principle has to first calm down before the higher principle gets activated. You go, what the heck are you talking about? In other words, you start from gross, as in low frequency, and move your way up. So, what is the lowest frequency that you have? Your physical body. So first, when you're meditating, you want to experience stillness, you first have to, have to immobilize your body. I know, some of you say, yeah, but you know, I do walking meditation. That's great and wonderful. Go for it. The ones who want to listen, listen. So the physical body, you do not want to get input from the physical body. That's why you want to quiet the room down. You don't want to have any air blowing in your face. And you don't want your back to be hurting when you're You want to be your back to be as comfortable and as non-existent as possible. So it's not like, hey, you know, move me this way. My leg is this, my foot is that, right? So that allows the body to what? To calm down so you don't notice it. Then you move a little higher which is your breathing. Haven't you noticed a lot of meditation say, okay, you know, sit comfortably, just observe your breath, inhale, exhale, in. You know what they're doing. Most of them probably don't, don't know or they don't want to tell you. Once you don't move the body, the next thing that's slightly more subtle is your breath. You don't see it, but your body is working with it together. So you're kind of transitioning from the movement of the body now to something a little more subtle, which is your breath. So you watch your breath. Hmm, you're watching your breath. Good. And from there, you observe your emotions. Am I stressed out? Am I angry? No, am I happy? How am I feeling? Right? And most of the time when your body's moving around and you're breathing like this, you, you can't really feel much because it's just dumped in one altogether. But once the body's calmed down, it's not moving, it's immobilized, the breath is more rhythmic. You start observing your emotions. Oh, yeah, I feel a little pissed off because she did it to me or he did that to me or I'm not really happy because of whatever. And then you observe. At some point, the emotions calm down. The act of observing it, just kind of not being attached to it, at some point, it loses energy because you're not like feeding it. You're just observing. Oh, okay. Then it allows you to observe your thoughts. You go, oh, okay, how's the mind? Okay, it's jumping all over the place. Hmm, what's it jumping into? It's jumping into that. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Or like, you know, sage usually like to say, it's just like clouds in the sky. You don't like the cloud. You don't go pluck it out of the sky. You just observe it. After a while, it goes away. So what actually happens is you go from the body to the breath, to the emotions, to the thoughts. By the time you calm this down in this sequence, you start experiencing, that's weird. It's so quiet. You're not feeling much with your body. Your emotions are calm. Your breathing is rhythmic. You also notice there's hardly any thoughts. The only thoughts that you have, that you're observing all of these. And if you just put your gentle awareness in that area, suddenly you suddenly feel like, sense now 
I know some of you are saying, well, that's what it's called. Energy follows thought. Actually, that's not an accurate statement. I, when people say it, I don't say anything. But I remember my teacher telling me the, the more accurate way of saying it. It's not energy follows thought. Energy follows where you put your attention to. And that attention is just basically where you aim the energy. And that energy could be because you're thinking of something, could be you're feeling something, which is not a thought, or you notice that, oh, you know, let's say your arm, your arm is uh, pushing against something that's sharp. You're not thinking, you're not feeling. What happens? Your body is experiencing the pressure. So it puts your attention there. So energy does not only follow thought, it follows emotions, it follows attention, attention from energy, anything. Energy, anything that produces energy, your body, your emotions, and your thoughts. And of course, as you do more spiritual practice, you realize, oh, energy also follows where the soul directs the attention. Then the spirit, and it keeps going. I know some of you are new, you go, whoa, mind blown. Good. Let's just warm up. Okay, let's keep going. That's why some of you, you start to go, yeah, you know, I'm so busy, so I just make it whenever I can when I'm running around. And how's that going for you? Yeah, it doesn't work. Exactly. Because you have not reached that level of stillness yet. So that's why meditation practice is so important. When you immobilize your body, you calm your emotions, you, you quiet your mind, you reach that level of stillness. Once you get there over and over and over again, that stillness is something that you're familiar with. So once you have it, you start noticing no matter how busy you are, you can now actively say, I want to be still. And the whole thing is like an algorithm, one after the other. The body calms down, your breathing slows down, your emotions and your mind just quiet down. That's what they call, that's what the athletes call being in the zone. That means you talk to like some of your athletes. You, you notice when you are, you know, let's say you play basketball. When you when you take that shot that you know it's going to go in, there's that moment where it's as if time stood still. Like, right? Same thing. So stillness is extremely important. Now, let me go back to what we said earlier. Stillness, as my teacher said, is not the objective because if stillness is your only objective, you can't go any higher. You see, it is through stillness that even higher frequencies beyond your body, your emotions and thoughts registers into your brain and nervous system. And most people call that intuition. See, most people don't realize that the word intuition, they just throw out, oh yeah, intuition, I just get downloaded. You ask them what it is, they go, I don't know, I just, I just know. You realize what I just, what you just said, right? Because when you say thinking, thinking usually has to do with some form of process. I thought of the car, I thought of somebody who might need the car, and if that person uses the car, they can go to work. That's a process. That's not intuition. That's simple observation and logic. Intuition is, I just know there's this person who needs a car to go to work. I didn't see a car, I didn't see a person, I just know. See the difference? So it's beyond the mind. So without meditation, you can still attain that. But it's one of those, yeah, I just had that moment. I just had that zone. With meditation, you can do it like clockwork. Anytime you want. Just that. Simple. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do a short meditation. And we'll guide you through this process. And we'll take you higher. Okay? So close your eyes. Just inhale slowly. And exhale slowly. Inhale. Exhale. Just keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now adjust your body in such a way that it can be as stable as possible. 
Okay, sit as comfortably as you can. Don't lay down because I know if you lay down, you're going to fall asleep. Your body's going to fall asleep. So sit comfortably. Sit straight. Your choice, legs crossed, leg flat on the floor, whatever you like. Your neck straight, your head straight. Just put your body in such an equilibrium that you don't have to worry about it anymore. Just keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And just observe your body. Just keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now just silently follow. I'm not this body. I am the self, the true self, the soul. I am the soul observing this body. Just be still. Now observe your body breathing. Just watch it inhale. Watch it exhale. Just observe it. Just like observing someone. Observe the body inhaling. Observe the body exhaling. Just take your time. Just keep watching. You will notice the body inhales. And the body exhales. The body inhales. The body exhales. Just keep observing. Just be still. Observe your emotions. What kind of feelings are there? Happiness, joy, anger, stress. Just observe it. Just like watching someone else's feelings, observing them. Observe and just silently affirm, these are not me. I'm not any of these emotions. These are not I. I am the soul, the spiritual self that created these emotions. Just be still. I'm not the body. I am the soul. I'm not the emotions. I am the soul. Observe the thoughts. They're just floating out there. What kind of thoughts are floating around? Just watch them. The fact that you're watching them, the observer or the watcher could not be the same thing as what's being watched. So just observe those thoughts and just silently affirm, I'm not any of these thoughts, I'm not even the mind. I am the thinker, I am the soul. And just be still. I'm not the body, I am the spiritual self. I'm not any of my emotions. I am the spiritual self. I'm not any of my thoughts or the mind. I am the spiritual self. I am that. The spiritual self. Be still. Just observe. What is it like? Without sensations of the body, feelings, or thoughts, what is that? Some of you say, nothing. What does that nothing feel like to you? What does it seem like to you? How do you perceive that nothing? Now just allow the observer 
to dive deeper into that nothing. Explore it. You are pure consciousness. Just dive into that nothing and let go now. Go deeper into that nothingness. I am that. Be still. Maintain your stillness, maintain your state of awareness, you're not the body, you're the spiritual self, you're not the emotion, you are the spiritual self, you're not any of your thoughts, you are the spiritual self, you're not even the mind, you are the spiritual self, the soul, a spiritual being of pure energy, allow yourself to drift deeper and deeper into that knowingness by saying I am that pure nothingness sunya kong the void nothingness within that nothingness is everything this pure energy that permeates the universe. Just allow your consciousness to merge with that nothingness. Now, let go. Let your awareness just dive deeper and deeper into that pure nothingness. Maintain your stillness and awareness will expand your sense of nothingness. You don't have to do anything, it's be done for you. Higher frequency. frequency.
yourself to swim in that universal current. deeper into that beautiful nothingness. very slowly come back to your body very gently move your fingers move your toes just take your time gently and slowly slide back to your physical body Slowly come back to your body. Go ahead and wiggle your fingers and your toes. That helps you come back. You know, it's the furthest away from your head, right? So the divine energy, as you move your fingers and toes, it forces the energy to move to those parts. That's how you come back to your body. All right, raise your hands. We'll release the excess energy. We always do this after meditation. You generate so much energy. You might not feel it as in like physical energy, but it's very subtle. So your aura expands 20, 30, 40, 50 feet in radius. So all that energy, when you're done, we cannot absorb it anyway. So whatever we cannot absorb, we bless our loved ones and friends and projects and all that stuff. We do it like, like we did here in the full moon. Okay? So put your hand like this. First, visualize all the people you love. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. May all be blessed with peace, love, and kindness. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Project golden light down into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. Okay, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders. Holy Master, Saints, Archangels, Holy Angels, Spiritual Helpers, thank you for your blessings. To my teacher, Master Tuak Paksui Mahagu Jumeling, thank you. In full faith, so it is. All right, open your eyes. I hope you guys are still conscious. Uh, there was a lot of energy, right? Some of you think you have to do a lot to generate energy. Let me let you in a little secret. You've seen me post it sometimes. In stillness is real power in stillness is real power because at that point the more still you are when the body the emotions or thoughts are not moving or just as still as possible that's when the divine energy goes through your body you have to realize this energy is very very subtle it's so subtle that the only way you can really permeate your consciousness 
when everything's still. Get it? No. The shortcut to all of this, the shortcut is as you realize who you really are, that you're not the body, not the emotion, not the thoughts, at that point, the body, the emotions, and the thoughts influence over the eye start diminishing. Look at my hand. As if this the influence of the body, the emotions, and thoughts, as those diminish, the soul's infusion goes up. Make sense? So as long as this is busy, the influence of the spiritual self or the real self within you decreases. That's called the general public. I don't, I don't mean that in a demeaning way. That's why you look at you just look at your friends and loved ones. The ones who are not serious about their spiritual path. One day they're great, another day they're depressed. <laughs> That's their life. You notice that? I don't know about you, but who wants to live like that? But most people don't know. They don't know. They let external things run who they are. When in reality, you first want to go back to who you are. You are the spirit yourself, not the body, not the emotional thoughts. That's where you get your center, your stillness. Once you get that stillness, you are like a solid pole of light. Then you look out. Whatever disturbance is outside, you know it's happening outside. So you get to do what you need to do. You get to control it. You need to control what you say, what you think, and what you do. On most people, it's the other way around. That's what they say, they made me do it. The society made me do it, blah, blah, blah. They, the devil made me do it, blah, blah. All this, everything is outside. That's why the life's like... <laughs> you might remember last, a few days ago, I said, that's exactly the mistake most people make. They meditate because they use meditation to fix something. When they, in reality, it's the other way around. When you meditate and realize who you are, what your center is, that's the guy who fixes stuff outside. Not that you meditate to fix something inside. Are we getting somewhere? You're probably too spaced out to listen, right? After that meditation? Anyway. So, that's that. As we do this over and over and over again, just like people develop muscles, you develop some level of spiritual muscles. So people say, yeah, I'll meditate when I have the time. Mm -hmm. How's your life doing? How are you handling stress? I get through it. How are you doing? Yeah, I force my way through. Exactly. But if you're doing your spiritual practice, stuff happens, you observe it. You look at it calmly. Okay, this is what I need to do. That's that. Just like many years ago, and I'll end with this. Many years ago, uh, I took a group to Hawaii. And uh, we, we had a gathering. Some of you were there with me. It's a small group. And I remember we were out in the beach, in the ocean, in, in the waves, right? And we're trying to meditate in waves. <laughs> People are going, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> going like this. And uh, I think at some point I said, be still. Of course, I knew when I said that it's ridiculous. How can you be still when your body's moving around with the waves, right? So I told them, I said, look, it's as simple as this. Your spiritual practice is like an anchor in the waves of life. When you have inner stillness and peace, that's where you are regardless of how strong the waves hit you. I remember when I said that, some of the students went into bliss. That's all I said. It's not like I gave them massive energy, but that realization to them like, when I get to that part of the eye, everything else is happening outside. These waves, and literally, hey, the waves were hitting us. But you look at the people, even though their bodies were moving around, they go like this, like this, you know, because of the waves, right? You look at their face, and I talk to them later, yeah, it was very, very still. Because stillness does not come from outside. Stillness comes from who you are, and not with the stupid drugs you're taking. I know. So where would that come from? Yeah, because I've talked to a few people. Yeah, man, when I smoke this, when I drink this, when I take that, I have that inner peace. Mm -hmm. How long that? How long that? Does that last until you take your next, you take your next dose? <laughs> and 
They should just free. It's always been within you. Make sense? That's one of the reasons why we call this anchor the light. You anchor that spiritual light. Once that anchor, what that spiritual light is anchored deep inside of who you are, you're solid. Now, does that mean that you're not going to fall? You still would, because sometimes you forget. It happens to all of us. But you know what? When you're anchored, go. it's very easy to go back to your center. That's it. Okay? So I hope that helps. I know it's not some Chinese proverb or some Zen story tonight. So I thought, well, maybe we, we, we've gone, you know, really expansive, a lot of topics, but we forgot the, the basics. Do you have the stillness? Otherwise, we're just telling stories. Oh, that's profound. Uh, so let me finish it with this. I want you to do your best on a regular basis to check yourself. How is my level of stillness? You can be in the middle of doing something and you go, okay, let me just stop for five seconds or for, let's say, a minute. Can I go back to that stillness on demand? Here's what you observe. Try to observe how long it takes you to get there. That's your test. You understand? That's your test. So let's say you're busy on doing this, I'm doing this, I'm taking care of the kids, I'm doing this, I'm taking care of that, 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 that. Wait, wait. Just literally interrupt yourself and just to test. Can I do this? So in the middle of that, say, wait, I need to do this. And well, I have three minutes. Let's see if I can take a little bit of that three minutes and go to deep stillness. Without any meditation. Just like, and you go, okay, I'll stop. Close your eyes. Be still. How fast you get there is your way to gauge where you're at. These are not written in books. You just do it. All right? So, anyway. Namaste, everyone. You all have a wonderful evening, Thursday. And we will be back on Friday, Friday morning for Anchor Delight. And love to hear from you. Let me know your comments. If this is way too much for you, uh, if it's too much for you, uh, well, there's two choices. Either you stick it out or you go away. <laughs> because I'm not going to lower the standards. Because there's only one direction we go forward. That's that. Namaste. Y'all take care. God bless. And we will see you. Oh, we should give thanks. To the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, thank you. To my teacher, Master Chalkok Sri Mahagujumini, thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right. I think Tony's coming, so I, I, I should finish this now. <laughs>